How's it going? All right. Um, good morning. Juliet, how are you? Actually, it feels like such an opportunity now to get some of these stories told. Growing under the ground, obviously, it's not something that somebody comes up with every day of the week. So it, it's quite, it's a very innovative solution. It's really out there. Did you sit down and think, okay, so why are we doing this? Did you, did you try and define the why at the beginning? Because obviously, when you first start a business, you don't have everything, do you? You kind of, you've got concept, but you don't know how it's all going to work and come together. And sometimes purpose can help you evolve that through it. Did, did you spend the time on that or did you just do it and then work out the purpose of it? <laughs> I think the, the, for me, the purpose came first. So um, the, 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 the issues we have in the world, um, you know, the carbon really is, is that main KPI for, you know, how we are um, affecting the world or how we can, you know, improve it. Improve it. And the three biggest contributors, which came from sort of my research from uh, Jeremy Rifkin's book, The Third Industrial Revolution, was the, um, was the three biggest contributors to carbon emissions are buildings and the energy required to power them. Uh, agriculture being the second and then transport being the third. And we found that by using redundant urban space, and it had to be powered by renewable energy, um, yeah. hence our relationship with uh, good energy and, and using renewables. Um, and um, we felt we ticked the, the, the major box uh, for that. Agriculture, we use uh, a recirculating water systems with, with hydroponics. We use recycled produce. So for example, our substrate is a recycled carpet um, and that um, is used. Uh, we're also looking at various other circular economy um, methods for uh, for waste, there's still a long, a lot of things we still feel we have to do and move towards, um, uh, but but we are making certain certain um, uh, moves towards that. And then transport being the third, obviously we're grow growing very close to the point of consumption, um, and um, reducing food miles, pollution distribution models, and um, and basically giving our customers a longer shelf life. Um, yeah. Uh, by, by uh, and reducing food waste, which is a, is a massive issue when you look at you know an area the size of China is wasted in food every year. The the area is, is the, the area to grow that. It's sort of what, what does it physically feel like to walk to to, uh, to go? Are there lifts or is it yeah. really complicated to get in so, there? Um, so it's two tunnels that are half a kilometer in length. Uh, they have a mezzanine floor through the middle, which creates two floors. Um, and they pretty much follow the A3 through Clapham. Um, you have two staircases at both ends that are like a double helix that are wrapped around a, a lift shaft, um, and that is part of the ventilation system as well. Um, so there is a lift into the, the tunnel, and um, there's, there's also plenty of uh, stair access as well. It's about 30 meters below ground. Um, what what uh, the site really lends itself to what we're doing because it has this stable temperature year round. One of the major arguments about um, uh, vertical farms is the energy consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very true in the fact that if you have a, a, um, a controlled environment, you need to have an HVAC system, which is very intense in energy. We don't actually use an HVAC. Um, we have a consistent temperature year round of about 15 degrees, whether it's minus four degrees outside or, or 35 degrees. Uh, and then using LED lights um, to to um, to grow the plants, that also produces some heat. So using that heat and ventilation at both ends of the tunnel, we can control the perfect environment for for growing. Can you give us some, a couple of examples, or just an example of some of the challenges you faced, and where actually your purpose has kind of helped you in a way? I know that's that's a bit of a complicated question, but it. It, it, to a certain extent, I think it's from my own experience where we've used our purpose to help us make difficult, either ethical or business decisions. Um, and actually, we found it really helpful. One of the main reasons when we started this, I think it's really important to have these um, purpose, these ideas of purpose laid out. This is quite easy these days because you've got things like B Corp where you can, uh, we're actually in the process of going through a B Corp application at the moment. And you, you can, you know, follow that that guideline the, the guidelines of that from the start but when we started which was you know back in 2012 the 
for us, it really didn't stack up if we weren't going to use, if we, we were going to start this business, which was agriculture that had, uh, was intense, had an intense use of energy, um, as agriculture does, especially in, the, in, in horticulture that, that we're doing, and, and in some ways more so with controlled environment agriculture. Yeah. But it had to be a renewable energy source. And, and this is somewhere where, and the belief of the business in the early days is that we are on this trajectory that, you know, there will be great parity um and, and i think we're we're getting close to that you know the price of of renewable energy has come down significantly over the over the um over the years and that's you know the, the technological change that we're, we're seeing we're going through are you seeing an evolution or changes in um vertical farming are there going to be more evolutions or are, are you just going to do more in terms of how you grow um and how you become bigger or, or do you see more innovations coming down the road I'm of uh, a sort of a big supporter of this uh, this exponential growth in technology and, and mm -hmm. that being um, very um, beneficial to society. Uh, and, and I see uh, a growth in this market in the next 10 to 15 years. It, it, it is initially, you know, what we're doing at the moment is, is baby, um, baby leaf and uh, microgreens. Mm -hmm. That's going to move into more... Um, uh, different crops like heads of lettuce, soft roots, maybe root vegetables, um, and and you know, depending on how things evolve, you know, in the future with technology, price of energy, um, and and how energy uh, works because that's one of the main contributors. Artificial intelligence right. and 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 automation because labor is a it's quite a labor intensive um, um, work uh, for, for that. So depending on how those things sort of roll out and how um you know the effects from climate change um it depends how we will grow in the future if you have a system where you have very um an automated system with with artificial intelligence with a very a relatively low energy cost from um an, an abundance of cheap renewable energy in the future the the, the is what sort of in, was inspired inspired me by Jeremy Rifkin's sort of ideas in, in the third industrial revolution, then, you know, you could potentially could produce crops that are, um, um, you know, arable crops, you know, if that is the case that we have to do that because of the effects that the, the society has put on the planet. If that is the case and you can start to grow that, I'm qu quite a strong believer in the fact that if you, if we can resolve and, and, and um, you know, stop climate action being too serious uh you can allow current land being used for agriculture to to uh to go back to its natural form and uh, and 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 be you know have more natural land as such yeah so so essentially what we're doing is trying to take some of the waste products that cities produce that have like heat um like co2 as you said that, that we have no use for and create a use for them in, a, in and create order out of chaos almost. That's what you guys are doing. Um, this wasn't about trying to make a business and then flog it and make lots of money. This is about trying to make a difference as, as a business in a marketplace. In my business, previous businesses, I've used different energy companies. I know that they are, you know, when you get to a stage where the business is in trouble and you, you need, you can't pay, they are very, very forceful to, you know, go at the very, quick to go legal and uh, we've been in the same position with, with you guys and you've been very understanding and and um and, and come at it from a social and uh, empathic sort of side of it as well which has been very nice and yeah. you know i did i think i i did I, at one point i got the management the um empathetic revolution um which was all about how to think empathetically from a customer point of view which right, okay. helped you never know yeah, it, it certainly has. It resonates through your style, so it's great. Yeah, so there's a great piece of work done by BAFTA, um, which looked at how many times uh, we talked about the environment in our drama series, in our comedy series, um, in youth, youth um, TV, um, in children's TV. And what it showed was that we were covering things like climate change and environment very, very effectively in documentary. We're doing quite a lot in news. But actually, in uh, in the thing that probably impacts us most, and we probably watch most in drama, particularly, it's not really being covered at all. Um, and so, I saw that as a bit of a challenge, really, to try and find scripts and try and find ideas that could be entertaining, that could be um, have dramatic content, um, and could have a wider influence. Because obviously, this is the changes that we need to bring in on climate is a much about winning hearts and minds 
as it is about the technology we're going to implement. And if you look at the Climate Change Committee report on um, zero carbon for 2050, it talks about nearly 60% of the action needs to come from behavioural change. And I think we need to use, and I think film and TV has been used very effectively over many years. I mean, most of the time we, we use it to tell human stories. And my view is this is a human story. It's just a very big human story and not always that easy to talk about. But um, we've got some projects going, which I think tell the story brilliantly well. So, um, well, I, I obviously, I'm slightly biased probably, but, um, and, I, and I think they're interesting. They allow people in, they inspire people. Um, you've, got, you've got a few he female heroes, maybe in a couple of them. Um, there might be a bit of a theme on that as well. Um, but, but yeah, so, so, there's, so it's, that's, what, that's why I, I've got involved and um, I, I kind of believe in that project. That's great. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan of film as well. I think it's a massive medium for, you know, that communication. Getting, yeah. uh, well, maybe uh, we should talk about that a bit more in another time. But yeah, very, very good to, uh, to speak to you, Juliet. And uh, thanks very much for inviting me uh, to, to, to... No, it's been brilliant. Thank you, Richard. And thank you so much for taking the time because it's, I know it's busy, but actually it feels like such an opportunity now to get some of these stories told. So thank you so much. <laughs>